I've proven them wrong. I've proven myself wrong and I know what I'm capable of. And I think I just want to show people that it can be done. It doesn't matter how tall you are. It doesn't matter how strong you are. You can get there if you work hard and anything, anything is possible. So you're a sports fan? Yeah. Along with being an athlete? What yeah. kind of sports do you watch on TV? Uh, football is the big one. Not so much college football, but NFL football because obviously the Chiefs. And uh, NCAA basketball. I'm not really into pro basketball, but I love college basketball, um, especially March Madness and things like that. I love the tournament vibe yeah. of everything. So. You're from the Kansas City area. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go to high school? I went to Barstow. It was a small private school on State Line Road. So even though I'm from Kansas, I actually went to school in Missouri. Okay. Is that weird? Yeah. It's weird trying to explain that. To you don't people. have a time zone change. No. Like some places you have that situation and you're, you drive across the street and you're in a different time zone. Yeah. Which would make scheduling. Yeah. Kind of crazy. Yeah. No. Luckily, no, no time. Did you grow up going to Chiefs games? Um, I've actually only ever been to one that I can remember, but I'm going to the December 31st Cincy game in Kansas City this year, so I'm really excited about that. But always on the TV every Sunday, order pizza, watch the game. It's kind of a ritual for us at home. Born and raised in the Kansas City area. Tell me about your family. How'd you grow up? Um, kind of grew up uh, not out in the country, like we're not on the farm or anything, no. but uh, we had a lot of land, a lot of acres, and um, so we kind of got to roam around down the south area of Kansas City, and uh, that was really cool. Now everybody's expanding out there, so we're getting more and more neighbors. I think we started out with like four houses in our neighborhood, and now we have eight, which is a lot for that little area, but um, yeah, just running around outside, playing basketball, pick up with my brothers, things like that, so. Four wheeling, anything like that? Yes, yes, actually. We've had a lot of flipped four wheelers. Really? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So, but I mean, it was a good time. I had a little pink one. It was a good time. Yeah, it was a good time. You didn't get hurt too bad. No, just like you're pinned, but then dad comes and flips it back over. So he's right there. Yeah. That was back when you were younger. Yeah. Like smaller yeah. four wheeler, yeah. Yeah, I had my little pink one when I was like seven. And then we kept my brother's old one, and I got to move up to his, so. Tell me about your brothers. You got brothers only? Yes, two older brothers, yeah. Yeah, uh, my oldest brother, he's not so much into sports as the middle brother and I, but um, I mean, he was, um, he and my brother were made it to state for basketball. Um, my oldest brother, he made it to the state for cross country and track as well. So um, he just, didn't really want to play in college. It wasn't his main interest. And um, he went to law school and now he's a lawyer in the Kansas City area. And my other brother, the middle brother, he played baseball uh, at Swarthmore, which is a small D3 school. And then when COVID happened, he transferred and played D1 at Wagner, which is in New York, which we just came from. So that was yeah. pretty cool to see where he was uh, that entire year. So yeah. What's he doing now? He's in law school as well. He's in law school at Mizzou, um, okay. which is nice. So when we play there, he gets to come and see the games with all his friends. So. Do you have really cool. plans to be an attorney as well? No. No? No. No. What, what kind of dynamic was that like growing up? Was it, was it really hard on you? Um, or did, did it change as you guys got a little bit older probably? Yeah, for sure. They're, they're probably mean and picking on you, and then it was a little bit maybe. Yeah more just fun competitive? Yeah, my my oldest brother, since he wasn't as into sports as me and the middle brother, he would always like, we would honestly team up and kind of beat up my middle brother, but he would come right back at us. Um, and me and Jared, who's the middle brother, would just butt heads like crazy because we're both just so competitive and we want to be right and we're both stubborn. Um, so he and I would go, back and forth pretty pretty often, probably like every other day. But now, I mean, he's one of 
the greatest supporters and is like, hey, you know, he's been there. He's he's had these experiences. He knows what a fifth year kind of of eligibility means and how important it is and things like that. And he'll just send me a text or send me a song and just kind of, hey, I believe in you, you got this kind of thing. So you're known for what? You tell me what you're known for in volleyball. Uh, jump, power, intensity would be my three. Let's do a quick, <laughs> let's do a quick volleyball 101 lesson. What is your position? I'm an outside hitter. Okay, how many people are on the floor at one time? Six. Okay, give me the positions besides outside hitter. Outside hitter, uh, middle blocker, right side, another outside, the setter, and the libero. What's that? The libero is the girl who wears the different color jersey. Okay. And she'll go in for the middles in the back row because your middles are typically big, strong blockers. And so they usually can't play defense as well as somebody who's pretty low to the ground and pretty agile at moving. And so usually you'll have your libero come in for your middle blockers and play that left back position. So that is that a lot of digs? Yes, Yeah. yes. So they're both big like defensive positions because the middle blockers are in the front trying to stop the attackers, things like that. And then the libero comes in and plays defense all in the back row. And she's back there all the time, except for one round where um, the middle has to serve. Okay. And Okay, I think we're there. Yeah. I mean, we watch it. Yeah. We don't know it like you do or by position. Yeah. But I think we understand the game, most of us that, that like sports. But your position, you get to do the fun stuff, right? Yeah. You get to do what everybody wants to do, which is kills. Yeah. Right? So our spikes or whatever we, we want to call it when we're out, just playing at the beach or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think what's unusual about your story is you're undersized for somebody that plays that position. What would be the average height in girls volleyball for somebody that's an outside hitter? Average height, I would want to say around like 5'11", 6 foot above. Okay, and you're 5'9"? Five, 5'7". Five, seven. Five foot seven. so you're like four or five inches undersized for that position. Yeah. And you can play that position, why? Um. Well, first of all, I knew I didn't want to just pass. So I knew to keep hitting, I'd have to get in the weight room and do all those things to really make sure I have explosive training and can increase my vertical. And so that's what I've, that's what I've done. You're there because you can jump. Yeah. Now, this is a recent development, right? You didn't, have you always been able to jump? Um, like when you were 12, 15, 17 years old? So like when I was 12, it was kind of this decent hop, but that didn't really kind of so start to develop. you had some natural hops. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. but really didn't start to develop until I actually like did stuff outside of volleyball to develop that, which I think I started doing when I was 13, so. What is your vertical jump? Um, Do you know? The On the jump mat, it's 32. Uh, is the highest I think we've recorded. But when you're playing the game, we wear our connects ons and your approach jump is much higher than your just standing vertical jump. Okay. So the approach jump, I don't know, but I know the jump mat because we do it every week. So. so how high can you get up on a basketball goal? Have you ever tried that? I Yeah, I try, but every time I do it, I'm like right there and I think I'm psyching myself out yeah. because the other thing that's funny about volleyball is that we're going to hit a moving ball. Right. So it's actually when we do like the vertex stuff, we're always mad because like if I touch 10 foot instead of 10 two, I'm like, oh my gosh, like my vertical is decreasing, whatever. But our connexons track all that information. And in practice, I could be touching 10 two, 10 three, whatever, and have no idea because I'm just doing what I do. I'm reaching for the ball and I'm just used to that movement. But when it's stationary like that, it actually gets really awkward for us, so. How unusual is it for somebody your size, you know, that, that's a, you know explosive jumper to, to play this position? I mean, it, it seems kind of rare. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of people um, or a couple of people who've done it in recent years. And um, there used to be a girl at Mizzou who was around my height and could jump really well. And she was always fun to watch because I watched her even before I got to school. And that was really cool to see just 
that it can be done. Yeah. You know? What position would somebody your size normally play? DS libero. Yeah, what we yeah. talked about earlier. Yeah. So when you were younger, I read a story, heard a story, your mom told you what? Basically, you're going to need to change positions if yeah. you really wanted to have a future beyond high school volleyball? Yes, yes. I was a middle and club throughout middle school, and we were looking to switch teams because I was on a three team forever, and I was going to a two team. But uh, basically, she just told the coach, like, I really think she needs to play outside because she needs to learn how to pass, and she needs to hit on the outside. She's too short to play middle. Um, my mom played volleyball, so she knows that stuff and I trust her. Plus, I liked being on the outside anyways because they would keep switching me over there towards the end of the season when we really needed to score. Mm -hmm. And so- So you were pretty good at it already. Yeah, yeah, I guess. As far as like a two and three team could be good, but yeah. Yeah, so, but, but that worked for you and then you, you decided you had to get a lot better? Yeah. And you must have loved it because mm -hmm. I'm sure there was a lot of work that went with that. Yeah, I actually, when I first started playing volleyball, I hated volleyball. And the only reason I kept playing volleyball is because my mom had played volleyball and she said, you're gonna keep playing. And I was like, well, this is dumb. I, I don't like this sport, whatever. But um, that year that I started to train and do conditioning and things like that, I actually started to get really good. And then it became really fun. And then I had no problem going to the gym outside of practice and going to practice. And I think that's when that love really started to develop there. So when did you realize, man, I'm pretty good. Like I could actually maybe get a scholarship or something. Um, I would say my sophomore year because that's when I got offered, but I'm not sure I really believed that until like the end of my junior year. Um, I was told my freshman year that I would be lucky if I would even make D2. Um, I wasn't tall enough to play on the one teams in but the who region. Who was telling you these kind of things? You don't have to give me names, um, but like what kind of- Adults. Like, like coaches? Yeah. yeah. Coaches, adults like that- Your coaches? Or um, not my coaches because I always, luckily I, me and my mom always made sure that I played for somebody who really believed in me. And so that's been a key throughout my whole career. Like I have to play for somebody who really believes in me and kind of just lets me be me. Um, and so that's why I love Jason. That's why I love the people who help me get where I am, so. Yeah, it's a fine line because, you know, as a parent, you want your kids to have to go through some adversity. Yeah. And that, that doesn't mean you're getting to start, or, you know, like all, you can't always move to a yeah. better position, but you gotta have people that believe. I think sports is really interesting that way. And I think you see, you know, it with transfer quarterbacks, you know, or, or in the NFL, you get a certain spot on a certain team and you're a better fit. Yeah. Um, so that somebody believe in you after hearing all those, by the way, are they still coaches? The people that uh, said yeah. that you'd be, okay, maybe we should look into their profession yeah. for them. But, but did that motivate you? Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, I've always, I don't think I figured out how much of a competitor I was until uh, I kind of started to get good at volleyball and started enjoying it more because I would play basketball and I really thought I liked basketball and it was fun, but I didn't have that like absolute drive to win, you know, like mm -hmm. and that drive to get better. But something about volleyball, when things started to shift, I was just like, yeah, keep saying that because I'm going to prove you wrong type of thing. Plus, I had older brothers to beat up on me too. And that just, I think that just makes me stronger as well. And they're some of my biggest supporters, so. Did it ever get bad enough for you to not want to play volleyball anymore? Or did some of the, you know, doubting just fire you up? No, I was just fired up yeah. like constantly yeah. because so you're always just that you had that yeah you know, because want to factor. I did have those people that believed in me. I know I knew it was possible, and they were telling me like I really believed that they would not lie to me or tell me something, give me some fluff saying you can do it, but then kind of yeah. they're actually not sure. I 100% believed that 
they were telling me the truth and it was absolutely possible. And they made sure that it was. So, so you had all these people telling you, yeah, you're probably gonna be a D2 player. I mean, obviously you're only five foot seven. I mean, it's just, you know. So then what happened? A after they're telling you this, you go to, you keep working, you're a junior now, senior. What happens in that time period? You so, said you got an offer when you were sophomore. Yes, so sophomore year is actually where, when I committed. Um, the recruiting process was a lot different then when I was getting recruited. Um, I think now people can't commit until they are at least juniors. But um, basically, I got moved up to one team, went, went to a different club, found a coach who, like I've been saying, like 100% believes in me, is still one of my closest friends and people I go to a lot. Um, so he's helping me kind of go through this process. We're not really, I'm not really sure, but he has 100% faith. And I got contacted by two schools. I emailed two schools, one that didn't respond, and the second who said that their 2019 class was completely full, but then we saw commits later. So it was just kind of like, yeah, like whatever, we don't, which is fine. Like, I don't, I didn't really prove myself yet, right? And so I got contacted by a small school and I got contacted by Arkansas. And so my mom and I went and visited that small school and I didn't get offered by them. And I was really bummed out because I was like, well, I, I just don't even, like, why did we even go if they're not gonna offer, things like that. We have a tournament and the next week I was scheduled to come visit Arkansas. So we have this tournament. Arkansas had been able to watch me before, but it, this is a big national qualifier, whatever. So we have the qualifier, I go visit Arkansas. It's everything that I want and more, right? And with a coach who, like I straight up told Jason, I, I can't just pass. Like I know a lot of people recruit these small outsides and then just make them a DS. But I was like, I just can't do that. It takes away too much of my game and something I love to do is get kills. So like, I, I just can't do that. I don't think I would enjoy the game. And he didn't care. He was like, of course, yeah, that's not even, wasn't even a question for us, like you're hitting. Um, and so I get home from that, the smaller school calls and they are like, hey, we wanna offer you. And I was like, look, I'm sorry, I've, I've made my decision and uh, I'm gonna go to the University of Arkansas. And part of it too was, I just wanna be able to play the highest level of volleyball I possibly can. Like, I just wanna be pushing myself to the edge of my abilities every single day. And that's what I was getting offered here in the SEC in a power five. Like, that was huge. With the opportunity to hit, whether I start or not, I'm pushing myself every single day. So then what happened after you committed to Arkansas? Did other schools start paying attention to you? Yeah. I mean, you had two years left. And I know yeah. it's not really about high school, it's more about club level. Yes. But you still had two years left before you can go play college ball. Yeah. Um, so you started getting yeah. a lot of interest? There was a, there was a couple more schools. Um, some schools that reached out and didn't even bother to spell my name right, so it was deleted. But most of them were <laughs> deleted anyways, because I was already How committed. We, which name did they get wrong, Jill or Gillen? Gillen. Okay. A lot of people like to do Jillian Gillian, or which I just don't get it. Like, it does roll off the tongue. It does, I get that, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But like, it's spelled pretty <laughs> simply, I don't know. G-I-L-L-E-N? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they spelled it wrong and I was like, nope. But I was nope to everybody because like, if you didn't care that much to reach out beforehand and there's this person, again, who has that belief in me, like I'm going with Jason every single time, you know? So that must have been nice too. Like if you already, if you kind of knew as a sophomore and you just kind of settled in and then did that take any pressure off of you? Did it make you want to go harder? Like what, how did that affect your last two years before coming to Arkansas? Um. Cause you know, that's like your whole goal is to get that yeah. at that point and yeah. then you get it. It's like it, so many of us, when we achieve something, you just kind of take a step back. Yeah. So I'm actually really the opposite of that's, that. Like, I mean, it doesn't surprise me yeah. given the success you've had. Yeah. So every time I achieve something, 
um, I just kind of go to the next thing. And that's not healthy always 100% of the time. Like sometimes you need to sit and reflect and see how far you've come. Um, but at that moment in time, when you're in high school, you're just like, nope, gotta keep going, gotta keep going. Cause you don't have the emotional intelligence to process those things. I mean, when I got the scholarship and I committed, I mean, there were tears, yes, of course, cause it was like, this is a dream come true. Um, but then after that, it was just, okay, I'm just gonna work to keep getting better. What skills can I keep getting better at? Passing, hitting high hands, things like that, so. So you, you continue to develop and, and you make it to Arkansas. Now, when you get here, what's, what's the program like? Let's do a little comparison <laughs> and, and, and how this journey's gone, yeah. you know, from a freshman to a senior. Yeah, um, the program, the program this was- This was 2019, just yeah. for some perspective. <laughs> The program was uh, struggling and um, was not in the most healthy of places. And um, I was fortunate enough that I got to start. And, um, but there were some injuries early on with the team. And there were big goals at the beginning of the season, right? Like we thought we'd be really good. Then we have the injuries then we have the setbacks. And now you have two freshmen starting outsides and people are like, what the, can they handle the load? Can they do this? Can they do that? And one of them's five, seven. Yeah. yeah. So like, um, that was a little bit frantic and a lot of pressure, but I think overall I'm really grateful for that. Um, and really grateful for that experience of just, learning how to deal with people as well who maybe don't have that exact same drive, but really want the best for the team and or they're just different personalities. Like they want it just as bad as you do. They just show it in a completely different way. Oftentimes when they need big swings, they go to Jill Gillen. Jill Gillen, a very powerful force on the outside, as we can see, taking those big swings, always looking for those blockers' hands to, to get those kills. So since that time, though, and you were all SEC freshmen, by the way, so that was that was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you had a nice year. You've had a great career, really. But how have you seen the program develop and, and change? Um, yeah, it's really changed. I mean, even after my freshman year and going into that COVID year, um, it was just way different. Like the attitude of the team kind of shifted and we became more of this team that when there's a setback, we're really resilient. Um, and I think that's stuck with us, right? Like COVID playing through that, people getting quarantined. Okay, how are we gonna respond being down? I think one of our first games that COVID year, we were playing Mississippi State and we were down 2-0 and had to come back for a reverse sweep and we did. And it was like really, really, really close. And I mean, that just kind of set the tone for the rest of that year and going forward, which has been really cool. How would you, you've talked about Jason, your coach several times. How would you describe the culture of the Arkansas volleyball program and what it's like to be here? For me, like it's an absolute dream come true. I mean, this is, this is everything I, I could have asked for and, and more. Um, I love Jason, I'm forever indebted to him. Um, he allows me to be myself every day, even if it's all over the place, he just allows me to be me and he really understands me. And that's another huge thing, right? When you're like looking at coaches and who you wanna play for, you want somebody who understands you. And the other thing that he's done for us is that he's made this program and changed it in a way where the players have a lot of responsibility to solve our own problems when it comes to interpersonal conflict and things like that. And he's done a really good job establishing, okay, these are, as a team, here's kind of our team rules. Like we're gonna go up to each other and have the conversation. We're gonna assume positive intent when we have these conversations because we all just want what's best for one another. And I think that that's really special that we can have really difficult conversations with one another, especially in the heat of the season. I think that's 
really cool. 47 kills as a unit and 65 digs as well. I mean, what stood out to you just about the collective effort offensively and defensively today? Yeah, I think we were just relentless um, and just taking care of business, you know. Um, I think we're trying to spread the offense out a little bit more, and it worked really, really well. Hannah's doing such a good job running the court as a setter, and we're just relentless on defense going for every ball, and I love that about us. It's uh, great to hear a senior who's, you know, gone from 11 wins year one to an NCAA tournament as a junior, you know, to a top 25 ranking, you know, that big match you all had with Wisconsin early in the year. Just, just watching you guys have success and then to hear how it's come together and that it, it was a storybook for you. Yeah. Like, it, it's a really interesting thing to have happen because it doesn't always work like that. Yeah. So, so as you've seen others come in, have you seen this happen for them too? Like, what's it like being a leader on this team and watching younger players come in? And what's your perspective now? My perspective now, um, when I see these younger kids come in, is instead of going up to them and just being completely direct and blunt and whatever, the best thing I can do for them when they're struggling and don't realize that they're struggling is just be there for them and just say, hey, if you need to talk to somebody, I'm here. I've lived through this. I've done years of this. Here's the advice that I can give you. Tell me what you're struggling with and we can figure out how to fix it and go from there. Um, I think a lot of times girls come in and they're a little bit hesitant to go to people with their problems because they just don't want to bother anybody but it's honestly the best thing that they can possibly do. And if I can be one of those people for them that they can come and talk to, then I love that role. Um, but a lot of the time I'm like, why don't just go up to Jason and talk to him? A lot of the time, all the newcomers and myself included are like afraid to go up in Jason's office and talk to him. But in reality, that's the best thing you can possibly do. And every time you walk out of there, you feel 10 times better because he actually cares. It's not like you're going up to somebody who is like, oh yeah, whatever. No, he, he's gonna help you fix what you need fixed. He's gonna help you go through whatever you need to go through um, and manage what you need to manage. And that's, I think, what's really special about him. It's cool to hear how you are as a leader, the kind of program you're in. I wanna hear more about how you are as a player. Like when you're in the game, what's going on with you? Um, <laughs> What's that look like? Um, I think that has also changed a lot. Uh, focusing on staying present a lot more and being really consistent for my team. That's been something that I've been working on and trying to change. In terms of like the personality that comes out, I mean, it really depends because if the ref calls a bad call or the other teams just you know, kind of on our nerves, things like that. That's kind of where that fiery intensity comes out, especially against big teams as well. Like nobody really has to do anything to provoke you. It's just, this is gonna be a battle and this is gonna be fun. And we're gonna bring the intensity so we can compete at the highest level. Team still filling each other out early and there is Gillen. You knew you were gonna see her soon. And so I think that's what I bring most of the time. But then there's just other games where you just have to stay consistent and uh, kind of monitor the team a little bit and what do you need to do for this particular person? What can I do to help this particular person? Because again, every personality is, is very different in how they play. What's it feel like to get a kill? They also battled some pretty significant injuries, but they have really turned around lately. <laughs> As Jill Killen, my goodness, might have to start advising helmets and knee pads on that side. She is swinging violently. And the razor Maybe a kill is like, I don't know, hitting a three or dunking. I think it's better. Think it's better? I think it's better. Than just going baseline and hammering one. Yeah. You think a kill is better? Yeah. Why? What do you like? Because I get to hit it as hard as I can every single time. Yeah. And you can hit it off people's shoulders, I mean, faces, it does feel whatever. Good. It does yeah. look good. Yeah. Like you're getting a lot of it's almost a way to just 
get all that anger out or I'm, I'm coming at you with everything I've got in me, especially when you're 5'7", like this is all I got. So I just like, I don't know, I just like, it makes me feel really powerful. And I think that's why yeah. I love it so much. Yeah, I think that whoever's on the other side of the net feels the same thing <laughs> from you. Do you get tired in a game from like repeatedly running up there and jumping? Um, no, not really, because most of the time I want the ball. Uh, maybe if it's like a minute long rally or something like that. But no, most of the time I, I want to be taking a rip at that, at that ball, so. There's Dylan again. What an assassin from the pin. <laughs> Man, if only people knew at a young age how good it felt to have a kill, I think we'd have a lot more volleyball players. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's just wild. Like, you don't, there's like no better athletic feeling in the world to, to in your mind. In my mind. There's no yeah. dream that you have that, yeah. that would even surpass that. Yeah. Well, like hitting a drive on the golf course 350 yeah. yards. Well, see, then I have my, my brother, right? Right. Who played baseball. Yep. And he's telling me, no, that's wrong, Jill. What's he, what's he saying? Getting the game winning point against a ranked team is not, not the biggest deal. He says home runs and playoffs. Yeah. Are the biggest Walk -offs. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Are the biggest yeah, but, thing to know, him. But everybody has their own thing. It's also, just my thing. But also, if you hit like, you know, in the big leagues, you play 180 games or whatever, and you were 165 too. What is it? 162. You get mixed up between 82 NBA games and 162 uh, Major League Baseball games. But let's say you hit 50, 60 home runs a year. You're a Hall of Famer. Yeah. I mean, you've hit. You've had 1,700 kills. But it makes somebody in, in a little career. feel really powerful. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, what I'm saying is you get to do it more often, too. Yeah, yeah. Big so blocks are like, really fun, too, though, actually. I'll say that. I'll yeah, say that, that sounds sure. good. I'm going to remember this next time I'm on vacation on the beach. Do you have any aspirations to play beach volleyball? Um, definitely not opposed to it. Uh, beach can be really well suited for smaller players because they have that ball control and like if I had a beach partner, likely they'd be a little bit taller and they'd probably serve to me because my partner's very really tall and then I get to hit the ball, so it's just Yeah, until me. they figured it out. Um, but <laughs> that, that yeah. That was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I would like to play beach, but maybe I'm, not right now, yeah, I'm but just in the future for sure. Yeah, what does yeah. the future look like after college volleyball for you? Um, what would that look like to continue playing volleyball? Well, that I'm trying to figure out right now. Yeah. But uh, something that's really cool that's going on is that um, teams are coming to America and they're building a pro league in America. And there's Athletes Unlimited. I've heard about that. But they're starting this new league and they're having um, these cities, like Atlanta already has their roster picked out. And um, it almost seems like every day a new city is announced. I know that Kansas City is supposed to get one eventually. Dallas has one that's been announced, but they won't start until 2025, I think. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the rate that that's developing, I, I would really love to play in the States one day as well. Because right now the path is kind of going abroad and getting started, um, which is really cool because it just gives you an opportunity to travel and also do the thing that you love. Um, but I think it would just be so cool to bring more volleyball to the United States because it is growing so fast here. And that would just be really cool to represent. That is, it's a new thing. Good timing for you. Yeah. What about Olympics? Uh, that might be on the question for me. Yeah, yeah. I might be too small for that one for sure. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. So there's some dreams that still aren't. There's some dreams that maybe you just have to be realistic with yourself. Um, and that's fine. Yeah. But for the other things that I know I can achieve and are like right there, I mean, I'm going after them every day. So South Carolina has not had too many clean looks. Gillen, look out. If you were speaking to a group of elementary, junior high, high school kids, you know, what would you tell them about your journey and what they could learn from it? I would tell them, and it is what I tell people who ask me, is that you can truly do anything you set your mind to. 
it is absolutely possible if you're willing to put in the work to do it. I mean, hard work beats talent every day, every day. And those who work hard will surpass that talent and become talented in their own way, right? But I think what it does to your brain is also really, really important. Just knowing I can do anything I set my mind to. If I have that like laser mindset, it really helps in games and things like that and just trying to achieve your goals. What does hard work look like? We, we say those things, right? Like you just gotta work hard. But what does that look like? Hard work looks like I'm putting in the work outside the gym that people don't have to know about. And I don't have to tell people that I'm doing it because if you're going up to somebody saying, well, I went and did this to try and make yourself feel like you're above others, I don't think you're putting in hard work for the right reasons. But if you're going and putting in that extra work every day that you don't have practice, that's super important and a huge key. Even if you're cross training and just like playing another sport outside of volleyball, that can help a lot too. Um, so I think hard work is how comfortable are you doing the stuff that other people don't have to know about. You've had a great career. Congratulations on that so far. And all the best as you finish up your senior season. What, what are your aspirations for this team? Um, would love to host the NCAA tournament. Um, would love to finish really high in the SEC. I think we all have some goals there, but um, we need to stay focused on that and kind of just take it one game at a time. And I think I think that's what we're doing there. Um, but I mean, we've made it to the tournament, right? That was a goal for us for a really long time. Now we want to make it farther and um, go for as long as we can. We have a lot of seniors on this team and I think we all just want to keep playing as much as we can, so. Can Arkansas win it right here? Yes, they can, but Taylor has Arkansas. A dominating 25-10 win in set three. I like to ask every Razorback that we talk to, when your career's over at Arkansas, what do you hope people remember about you being here? I, again, I think just anything's possible. Uh, there used to be a time where I would focus on, I would let other people's words impact me and motivate me. Um, and then I would care a lot about what they say following that. Cause it's like, oh, I'm proving you wrong. But I don't really think that's the case anymore. I've, I've proven them wrong. I've proven myself wrong. And I know what I'm capable of. And I think I just want to show people that it can be done. It doesn't matter how tall you are. It doesn't matter how strong you are. You can get there if you work hard and anything, anything is possible. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so, so um, you know, having that belief and that confidence and that, you know, how do you get that? How do you get there? Years and years of <laughs> failures and accomplishments and all that mixed together how you process it and and reflecting, I think is really important, right? What I'm saying uh, from earlier about the accomplishments, you can go to the next thing, but if you don't take the time to reflect, you can't appreciate how far that you've actually come and all the work that you've put in to get there. And I think that doing that is really important. Like how, how do you make the switch from, you know, other people motivating you to you just believing in yourself and having a certain standard that you live at every day? Yeah, um, I honestly think that didn't really even happen until this year. Um, I was, I was, last year I got hurt and um, didn't get to finish off the season playing as well as I would have liked just because of my injury and things like that, but um, and I let that impact me a lot. And I let what other people say about that impact me a lot. And this year, I don't know, I just I just don't care. Like, I, I just don't care. There's some really cool stuff out there about statistics and whatever, but 
I just don't care. As long as I can keep focusing on what's happening in front of me, that's what matters. And that's what's gonna matter in the end. It's not, oh, this perfect statistic now. Like, no, that, that's not gonna determine what happens at the end of the day. It's not gonna determine how far the team goes. So if I can just stay in my little bubble with my team, because nobody knows how hard the team works besides the team and our coaches, then that's a really healthy place for me, I think.